Alrighty. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to talk to you about some of the work I've been doing uh, here uh, with Sadika and Ilya on sort of an avenue that we think might be a promising way to uh, make invertible generative models potentially more efficient and more expressive. And uh, so as Sadika mentioned, uh, when you're defining or designing an invertible generative model, you have two main constraints when, when doing this. You need the model to be invertible. And you also need the model, you need the, to be able to compute the log determinant of the Jacobian of the model. And those are two pretty big constraints. And because of that, we typically restrict ourselves to simpler architectures where those things are easier to compute. And because of that, we are, we're using these simple transformations. We must compose a whole bunch of them together to build an expressive model. And um, as, as Sadika mentioned, uh, is the case with the GLOW model. And, uh, if we could potentially use more expressive transformations at every step of our flow, then that might be a step for us to, uh, to build invertible models that are more expressive, use less parameters, and potentially use less computation. So in some of the work we've been doing, uh, we took kind of a different, uh, a different look at these types of models. And if you look at them in a different way, uh, something, the math changes in a way that provides an avenue for, uh, for maybe improving the models. So you can think of a flow-based model as uh, parameterizing a discrete time dynamics process where you start at time zero at the data. And then to get your next time step, you just apply every step of the flow. And then you, you encode your data by moving along all the way from time zero to the finish time. And then you can compute the likelihood of your data simply by the likelihood of the final sample under the prior. Uh, plus the sum of the log determinants along the way. And if we kind of take the limit of time to infinity, then this basically looks like uh, a continuous time dynamics process, where instead, uh, instead of having uh, individual flow models uh, parameterize the derivative at every single time step, we can throw all of that into one model that's going to take in the current uh, data point and time as well and then parameterize the gradient exactly. And then what this gives us is the exact parameterization of uh, an ordinary differential equation initial value problem. And the coolest thing here is that if we look at the log probability from the change of variables formula now in the continuous case, uh, we have a different, uh, a different term here. Instead of the sum of the log determinants, we actually have the integral of the divergence of the function that defines the gradient. And just looking at those two things next to each other, uh, the form is very similar, except now we have this integral of the divergence instead of the sum of the log determinants. And that's a, a very interesting dichotomy there, because the determinant has a lot of different properties than the divergence. And uh, specifically, in general, if we have an arbitrary function that goes from Rn to Rn, then computing the log determinant of the Jacobian uh, is going gonna, is gonna to work in n cubed time uh, once we have the Jacobian, which is also challenging to compute. And there's really no efficient way to get a, to, to estimate this, uh, and there is no like, efficient unbiased estimator. But with the divergence, uh, we can actually produce an efficient unbiased estimator just using automatic differentiation. Uh, and, and that estimator basically just works by sampling like a Gaussian probe vector and then pre and post multiplying the Jacobian by that vector. And then in expectation, that's going to give us the divergence of the vector field. And then we can similarly use this in the integral form of the log likelihood to get uh, an unbiased estimate for the log likelihood, which is not something we can do in the, uh, in the uh, discrete time si situation. And here's just a little three line kind of TensorFlow implementation of how you would implement this estimator. And, um, the cool thing here is that using this, now we have a way to parameterize these invertible generative models using an arbitrary neural network. And we also have a way to efficiently train them uh, just using uh, backpropagation or standard automatic differentiation tools, which are you know, very common today. Um, so there are some problems here, because we have alleviated a source of complexity, but we have added another one. Because now, instead of a very simple uh, like known computation process where we just 
apply the you know, n flows that we've defined, we must now uh, integrate, actually, this ODE. And that is uh, potentially challenging. And it's kind of been the, uh, the main area of, uh, of work that we've been doing, trying to make these models actually tractable and training them around the same uh, scale of time that we could before. And, um, and even more challenging, uh, we have to now backpropagate through the solution of an ODE and get the gradients of the outputs with respect to its inputs and the parameters that define the flow function. Uh, thankfully, there was some recent work uh, from the University of Toronto that presented a, a method that, to do this, and we've been building upon that method in this work. And uh, the basic way that works is you can actually get the gradients of everything you need just by solving a, uh, an augmented system of ordinary differential equations. And while this is uh, kind of out of left field from the deep learning kind of a type of work that we do, there's actually been quite a number of decades of history on numerical methods for solving ODEs. So there's decades of work that we can draw upon to, uh, to help us out with that part of the problem. And here's a somewhat of a, an example of some of the results I've gotten. Uh, so here is the continuous normalizing flow on the left here. And on the right, we have the GLOW model. And um, so in general, I have not quite beaten the results of the GLOW model yet. Uh, and I think that is mainly because the models currently take uh, too long to train, so I haven't been able to make them as large as I would like to. Uh, but I have noticed that uh, I have been able to get competitive results with uh, real MVP. And in some data sets, I have beaten the GLOW model. And uh, so I think it's a very promising avenue. And I just think there's a, a couple kind of little issues that we need to solve before we can really get these models to, to deliver the goods. Uh, and I guess just here's a little kind of visualization of one of these models in the working. And basically, we've started from the prior distribution there. And that was the, the continuous normalizing flow model actually integrating samples from the, uh, the prior distribution to match the target distribution. And um, so that was just in a simple two-dimensional problem. But uh, this also works quite well on some higher dimensional data. So here is MNIST. And as you can see over here, these are actually going to be the digits that are being warped by this is the gradient field here that is being applied to them. And then that is being integrated and actually warping them into what should look like Gaussian noise. And once this finishes, it will go backwards. And it's pretty fun to look at. Yeah. And the cool thing about this model is that this is just like one, one neural network that kind of has like an autoencoder type architecture. And that neural network just takes in these, uh, the images at every time step that they've been warped and the time itself. And it just parameterizes the gradient. And all we need to do to apply this transformation is integrate it. And, uh, yeah. and yeah, so that's most of what I've been working on here. And uh, if anyone is interested, feel free to reach out to me. There's my email. And do uh, you have any questions? Thank you. Questions? What dryer do you use on the forward scope? Oh, that's typically just a, a standard isotropic distribution. Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, that's the standard stuff. I mean, I've tried some other, like, more structured uh, prior distributions. Uh, and that, like, I did some earlier work here where I was working on using these models for, like, semi-supervised learning. So you could put, like, a mixture of Gaussians on some of the, uh, you know, some of the, the vectors. And that has an interesting effect of uh, modeling, you know, class conditional probabilities pretty well. But uh, for all this work, it was just uh, standard Gaussian distributions. Any other questions? I'm not sure if you mentioned this, but I was just curious. Like, how do you measure the performance of uh, the basically just like your model versus like other models? Oh, um, just the log likelihood of the data. Yeah. Um, so like that was the if you go well if we could go back a couple slides the bits per dimension is typically what uh, what people do, which is sort of like like you know log probability would be typically per, you know uh, written in nats. And then you just compute that from nats to bits and then average it over the dimensions. That's the standard metric people use in the uh, density estimation space. Yeah. 